Hello and welcome, my name is Michael Kölling and in this video I will tell you how the Stride Editor can provide help in reading and entering your program. There are several ways in the Stride Editor in which it provides help to you for both reading your program and manipulating your program. For the reading of the program we have already seen that statements are provided in frames. If this frame is just a single line it has no visible border but it is a frame that can actually be manipulated and dragged around if it is a compound frame that is a statement that includes other statements like such an if statement there is a visible line drawing about the frame indicating the scope of the statement this is a much clearer better representation of scope than the pair of curly brackets that Java has um, because it you know the brackets can be anywhere in the code they are very often not indented correctly or not aligned. Um, the frames are always guaranteed to be easily readable and clear. So the visual representation of Stride is the first bit of help that it provides to you. The next bit of help that we've seen already in the introductory video is that it helps you in getting the syntax of your statements correct. So if I want to insert an if statement, I hit my I key and I get an if statement and you see a lot of the syntax of the statement is already there. The keyword is there, the brackets are there, the whole outline of the if statement is there. So a good number of syntax errors that beginners make are automatically avoided. Not all syntax errors are avoided. If I now move the cursor away from here, I can see that I get the red squiggly underline here indicating an error because not filling in a condition in an if statement is an error. So it is not the case that you cannot make any errors but some of the errors, such as missing semicolons, missing brackets, and so they are eliminated as a possibility. So you will make fewer errors. Um, when we have an error, let's look at another example. Um, let's say I uh, declare a variable here, hit the V key, and have a variable called number that I initialize to zero. And then sometime later, I want to assign to this variable and I say uh, number is assigned 42 and here you see I have made a spelling error in my variable name so immediately I get um, an indication that there is an error in my program uh, I do not need to hit compile that happens automatically I can go elsewhere and continue working on my program so having an error in my program doesn't stop me from continuing somewhere else with my work but the error is immediately indicated and I can come back to this later on. And um, by the way, in the main win window, it is also indicated. Here are all my classes. All the striped classes are the ones that currently need compilation. And if the stripes are red, it indicates that there is an error somewhere in this class. And I can go here to my editor and I see that this class has, has an error. If I go to the location in my source code where the error is. Not only do I get a uh, message telling me about the error, it says undeclared variable number, but in addition to this, I also get possible fixes for the error. So typical fixes when you have a variable name that hasn't been declared is to declare this variable. I can declare it here, or I can declare it as a field in the class, but it is a little bit cleverer than that. It also recognizes that there is a variable being declared that is quite similar to the one I've typed. So it says, well, maybe you meant this one. And if that is the case, I can just click on this and this error will be fixed for me. And it is gone. That is the error display and error fixes that are available for some kinds of errors in stride. To enter statements, we have already in the introductory video seen the cheat sheet. I can here get a list of all the statements that are available for me to insert. And these are really all the statements that can be inserted. Uh, Stride is in its language design equivalent uh, to Java. And this is in a Java-like language, like Stride, such as Stride, really the full set of available um, statements. This set is context sensitive. I can, you can see this set here. If I go into an if statement, for example, you will see that there is um, a little bit added. There is now an option to add an else if or an else statement. So if I do this, if I click this, I add an else statement to the if statement. That is only available if I am in or near an if statement. So the cheat sheet also tells me 
for example, when I'm between methods, what I can insert here, I can insert methods or comments at this, or I can manipulate the existing methods. Another interesting way in which stride provides help to you is if you insert a method call. So I hit space to get a method call. It prompts me here to tell me that now what is expected here is a method name. So if I write turn, for example, immediately here between the brackets appears the expected parameter. It tells me now that one parameter is expected, which is the amount. So it shows me the formal parameter name that is expected here. So if I change this from turn to move, it shows me now the distance is expected. Or if I change it to set location, that it shows me immediately that two parameters are expected here, x and y. And I am prompted to insert the right parameters. This parameter prompting is really powerful and tells you exactly um, what is expected. It is no longer possible to have the wrong number of parameters in the method call without actually having a visual notification that something is missing here. The um, method calling is interesting in different ways. For example, if I want to call the set location method, I, and I start typing, I have code completion. Control space triggers my code completion. And here I can then, like in code completion in other environments, um, start typing and just select the method here that is suggested. Hit return and the method is inserted. It gets a little bit better than that. Code completion is actually quite clever. So if I if I insert a method call and I invoke code completion, if I am not quite sure what the name of the method was, I just know it was something to do with location. So I don't type set location, I just start typing location. Um, in this case, even though this is not a prefix string for set location, it still suggests that maybe you meant this method here. So it is not a literal completion function, but it is a search function in the space of my method names. And it says here related, so it's not a completion, but somewhere related to what you're typing is this set location. Say, oh yes, that's the one I mean. It also works when I have typing errors here. So let's start again. I want a method call and I say set location and I invoke code completion. Um, here, if I, let's say I type this. So I have here, I'm meant to type set location. I have a um, typing error in what I told. I missed out the C, but still the system is smart enough that it says, well, maybe you meant this one. So it is a help in finding the method that I want. The last thing I want to show you is that code completion is more intelligent than just calling uh, methods. If I have a method call, for example, set image, which expects a string. So here I have a string. Now the string in the set image method must be one of the file names of the uh, image files I have available in my project. I can invoke code completion here and Stride will show me the names of all the assets, of all the image and sound files that I have stored in my project so that um, some of the commonly used strings, that's the name of these files, are easily available and I get a preview of the image file as well. So I can say this is the one I mean, I just hit return and I have the right string inserted into my program. These are just some of the ways in which Stride helps you in both writing correct code or if you have errors in your code, finding and fixing the error. That is enough for today. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.